This is the F-22. This is the F-35. This is the Tempest. This is the FKAS. This is the KF-21. This is the AMCA. This is the J-20. And this one is the J-31. Did you notice anything? Of course they did. It is an easy spot. I of course certainly did, sir. <laughs> Welcome to Millennium 7 Star, the channel that helps you make sense of military history and military technology. Please stay with me till the end, because the stuff that we're going to discuss here, as usual, is not easy to find anywhere else on YouTube. You may have noticed that all the latest generation fighters, either in service or being designed, all look alike. And the reason is simple. Stealth killed aerodynamics. What I mean by this is that the stealth requirement is forcing a specific geometry on the aircraft. If geometry is constrained, then the number of available aerodynamic solutions is greatly reduced. If geometry is constrained, all planes will look the same. However, the evolution of stealth design somewhat limited these constraints and the penalty of modern designs is not as severe as it used to be. The F-117 had flat surfaces and angular shapes because the calculation of the radar reflections was executed on a punch card computer. Today, computer simulation and finite element modeling allow for less tough compromises. But still, the design of a stealth plane is clearly recognizable. There are two classes of solutions for radar stealth, radar absorbing materials and geometric stealth, with the second being the main contributor. Otis, would you be so kind to explain to our viewers? Thank you, sir, for letting me cover such a cutting edge subject, sir. Radar stealth is based on the principle of reducing the radar energy reflected back toward the radar receiver. The radar equation is the following, where PR equals peak received power by the emitting radar, PT equals peak transmitter power, GT equals emission gain, sigma equals radar cross section, A equals effective area of receiving antenna. The peak received power is the parameter that influences the detection of the target. Stealth purpose is to minimize the peak received power. This is obtained by reducing the radar cross-section. The radar cross-section, in square meters, measures the fraction of reflected energy and compares it to the energy reflected by a square metallic plate. The radar cross-section is a property of the aircraft, and it varies with the aircraft aspect. Radar cross-section reduction methodology hash one absorbed the radiation. The aircraft structure is coated with paint or a layer of material that absorbs the radar radiation. This is obtained by adding metal inclusions that either reflect the radiation onto each other or resonate with the radiation frequency. In both cases part of the incident energy is dissipated. No practical radar absorbing material can absorb 100% of the radiation. Actual absorption is quite low, in the region of 10% to 15% of the impinning energy. Radar cross-section reduction methodology hash to scatter the radiation. The aircraft shape is such that the radar radiation is scattered toward directions different from the provenance. This methodology can achieve high radar cross-section reductions but for a limited range of directions or aircraft aspects. For operational purposes, the most important aspect in terms of radar cross-section reduction occurs at zero degree roll, zero degree pitch and zero degree yaw. It is usually represented in a polar diagram that shows the radar cross-section in respect to the orientation of the axis of symmetry of the aircraft. Sir. Thank you, Otis. Well done. Otis explained how stealth depends on shape. Since radars are usually far from the target, you may consider that the radar beam is basically horizontal, so you may want to scatter the radiation up and down. Horizontally, you may want to scatter the radiation sideways because moving toward or running away from a target is when you really want to be less visible. On a stealth plane, you will never find a vertical wall just because they reflect the radiation striped back to the emitter. 
the edge on the frontal part of the fuselage like this or this scatters the radiation away as if it was a mirror because the wavelength of the impinging radiation is small if compared to the dimension of the surfaces involved. Radar radiation can be assimilated to light reflecting off the metal. For the same reason, sidewalls are usually not vertical and the tails are canted outwards. Another element that you won't find on a stealth plane is 90 degrees angles. A 90 degrees angle has the property of always reflecting back the radiation toward the direction where it came from, which is exactly what you don't want. This is the reason why external stores are so harmful to stealth. The pylons under the wing are vertical and they are also 90 degrees with the wing. Also, canards are not particularly stealthy because they form an angle with the fuselage which is usually close to 90 degrees. Classic wedge intakes like this are, yes, of course, very efficient, but definitely not stealthy because of all those 90 degrees angles. On stealth planes, the air intake tend to be an irregular lozenge to deflect the radiation away from the direction of provenance. The wing platform is more varied than the fuselage, but still there are some common traits. Wing edges, leading and trailing, are often parallel to a couple of directions. In this way, radiation is reflected toward a couple of directions rather than in multiple directions. Actually, all the edges in a stealth design tend to be aligned, so all the reflections are all parallel. In the reflection of those directions, the return will be strong, so potentially a radar could pick up the stealth plane uh, at distances comparable with a normal plane. But the receiver would need to be located in a different position than the emitter. This is called a bistatic radar. This is definitely not something new. The first radars ever built were bistatic radars, but this is forcing a further complexity onto the enemy defenses. There are several other effects to be considered other than specular reflection, like creeping waves, uh, edge diffractions, and structural resonances. But this may be the subject of another video because these do not impose a specific structural constraint to the plane. Sir, this video is too short, sir. <laughs> Don't worry, uh, there is another chapter. Be quiet now. Since stealth favors clean cut lines, uh, we have lost some of the features that used to be very important in aircraft design. For example, the area rule is hardly compatible with stealth because it requires smooth variation of surfaces. Hence, in general, the transonic performance of stealth plane could be better, everything else equal. On the upper surface of the plane, which is less likely to receive radar radiation, some shaping can be done, but otherwise the planes tend to be rather blocky. The other lost element is the variety in wing platforms. There was already an evolution toward delta wings, which is inherently a rather good stealth platform, but modern stealth is actually enforcing the use of suboptimal platforms. They can do very well, better than you may expect, because today, again, with computational fluid dynamics, it is possible to fine tune them optimize them for the various flight conditions. Still, they may not be, and in general they are not, the best from an aerodynamic point of view. I know I will be unpopular, but today the most efficient aerodynamics can be found on the Sukhoi 27 family. On the Sukhoi 27, the wing and the lifting body are optimized for speeds ranging from 0.7 to 0.8 Mach, to 1.2 to 1.3 Mach, which is the range speed which is most used in practice and in combat. 
If we compare the Sukhoi 35 with the F-22, the two aircrafts have roughly the same takeoff weight, roughly the same maximum speed, if the data available are correct. But the Sukhoi 35 has 25% less dry thrust and 10% less afterburner thrust than the F-22. The F-22 achieves its remarkably outstanding performance by brute force rather than by aerodynamic finesse, like the Sukhoi 35. And this is sort of sad. So if you like this video, I'm sure you will love the videos that are going to appear beside me. In the meanwhile, please like, dislike, subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss anything. And if you could consider supporting the channel on Patreon or Subscribestar, you will have my gratitude forever. And mine too. I need some good quality AC power for my circuits. Uh, Otis, AC power makes you tipsy. I thought we already had this discussion. This is not for you to judge. You can't judge me. You are not the creator. Otis. Ot 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 Otis, where, where are you going? Ot Otis, where? Thank you for watching. Otis! Otis!